ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the Mic Drop Podcast. It's your boy Alex Wardu. I got a special guest here, Spot Collins. Say what's hey, up to hey. the people. What's up, peoples? How you doing? Nice to meet you. Yes, sir. Uh, follow us on Twitter uh, at Drop the Damn Mic. Sometimes we post clips from the podcast interviews that we do on there. So go follow us. Make sure you subscribe, like the video. Um, follow me on IG at What Do the Dudes. Um, follow the Mic Drop IG at Mic Drop Podcast. Yeah, bro. Yes, sir. Who, who is Spot Collins? Because I'll be seeing you on IG, but based on what I see in your IG, I don't really know, like, if you're a producer, <laughs> you're like, are you, like, an actor, or, like, like who but, is Spot Collins, bro? Bro, I barely know my damn self. <laughs> 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 I wake up every day like, yo, what is going on? I don't know, bro. The best way to, to describe it nowadays because the younger cats do it and they taught me this is just saying like i'm a creative bro i'm just i create yeah. that's my thing um since number since like day one my family has always kind of been in the creative arts field um i was raised in that you know acting singing dancing all that type of stuff okay. uh so as an adult it's just kind of like finding what you like most you know and what you feel like spending your time you know you only got one life spending what you know want to do doing that so for me it's like I, I really like music i really enjoy writing i love you know um acting and, and and film and entertainment as well you know so for me those were the two kind of fields i i gravitated to um okay. and it, okay. i know it confuses a lot of people I, it confuses me too people <laughs> like what do you do i'm like i just i just create i just yeah i just because <laughs> i've seen your bio you said like uh this page isn't a proper representation so shit. No, i'm like bro, it, i'm like what does that mean bro what does that mean <laughs> it's, so, it's social media bro it's social media so it's like it to me it's like i i, I only see it as like people only show the best of what what it is or you know or even if they're showing the worst normally when it's really that bad they don't show you know what's going yeah. on but yeah. it's like you know people on social media only show the best of their lives of the best of even the best of the worst they only show the best side of it so yeah. for me i'm like i'm not you know i'm not outside of that realm i only show the best side of my life you know i only show you know the things that i i enjoy even the, the bad parts i don't like i only show the best of it mm-hmm. you know so I say it on my page. This is not an accurate representation of what I go through in my day to day, bro. I struggle with a lot of stuff, and like I don't show people. I just kind of yeah. want to show you guys, like, hey, look, I'm having a good day because it's partially like who cares, and then it's partially like, look, I'm not here to waste your time about like how sad I am some days that I did this project didn't go the way I thought it would, you know, that this song didn't go the way I thought yeah. it would. So I'd yeah. rather just you know suck it up and get to the next song, get to the next project, get to the next you know writing whatever it is. So yeah. when it comes to Instagram, when it comes to my page, it's just, look, I'm showing you guys the best of what I have, or I show you guys what I choose to show you, you know? Because <laughs> I mean, like, when you do show that negative side a lot, like, on your IG and shit, it can be like a drainer, like, for people. Like, people don't want to see that shit on their feed. Absolutely. Absolutely, bro. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's like, and it sucks, especially now that we're coming to the age of, like, the people are more aware of, you know, mental health and all that stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But it's just like it you're 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 balancing your own mental health based upon people's public perception of you. Right. So it's right, like, right. you know, I, I wanna express how I feel, but who cares? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched this show recently, um, it's called High Maintenance, and they had this episode where this guy was kind of wanting to talk about how he's successfully going through his health journey. You know, but this was during a time when Trump got elected. So everybody was uh, online like, oh, my God, I can't believe he's president. Now, da, da, da. And he felt like, yo, who, who cares? You know, who cares about, you know, that I lost 10 pounds? Who cares that I'm choosing healthy snacks over, you know, fast yeah. food? And it made him fall into kind of like a, a a recession of going back to eating unhealthy things. Now, for me, it's like it sucks, but that's kind of how I feel sometimes when it comes to yeah. social media. Like. Who cares? Like, good or bad, Loki, who cares? But if I'm going to share something, I would like to share, like, the positive stuff. You know? Positive stuff. You know? It, or, mm, go ahead. 
and then when you do that it kind of feels like anything that you post online is like you're just doing that for validation from someone you don't even know you feel me? exactly so then it then after that after you you be like okay look i don't want to do that it becomes like now what do i feel comfortable for like posting because i don't want to post for validation i don't want to post to get anybody down i want to post my problems but what do i still feel comfortable posting and for me it limits like a lot of what i feel comfortable posting with and everybody's like you don't post stuff you know you you do all the stuff you create all the stuff but you don't post i'm like i really i don't see the reason for it i don't (laughs) (laughs) like after i boil it down it's like one or two things and like for me loki those things like slip through the cracks like i'll look at them like an hour later like why did i post this <laughs> yeah yeah that's how it'll be no that mm-hmm. that's how it'll be yeah but, but um, i do like to post like my yeah. creative stuff because i do like to at least share that for people that do want to create to be like look regardless i'm gonna create regardless of what you think's going on in my life whether you think i'm having a good time or a bad time whatever you feel whether you know what's going on or whether you don't i'm still creating stuff so that's why I like to post like, hey, this is a song I'm working on, or this is a script I'm writing, or this is, you know, a film that I'm directing, whatever, da, da, da. It's, I still like to post that regardless. So I'll still post that, yeah. you know, because that's what I feel like social media is for, to promote yourself as a brand. So I'll, I'll do that. But other than that, is, yeah, I, I don't get too personal with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so shit, let's talk about the the creations that you be making since mm-hmm. i don't really know so you kind of like a childish gambino type like you got your hair, <laughs> you got your hair a lot of different shit so i'm like let, let's start with music so how what how is like the music what started the creation of like your music what inspired you to make music my music journey started that's funny i really don't think about the start of it too much but the start of it is um I'd have to, honestly, and I hate to do this because he's going to love this, and I hate to do this, especially <laughs> something that he might see, but I'd have to give the credit to my older brother, man. I'd, I'd honestly do it. Like, first of all, Coke, when you watch this, shut up. Um, <laughs> I don't care. Shut up. I know you're over here celebrating. <laughs> shut up. Uh, but it's, my brother was was heavily into music. He's very, very gifted, very, very creative. So when it came to like just me and him shared a room, so he's making beats in the room. I have no choice but to just sit there and listen, sit yeah. there. And, you know, I can't complain and be like, yo, turn it off. You know, I'm five years younger than him. So it's it's more of just like I'd, I'd rather just sit here and write songs. And I'd sit there and, and write songs to the beats he created and wouldn't just say anything, and, you know, and just, you know, do my own thing. Um, and then like I fast forward, I think I'm like 16 or something. You know, I, I'm a little bit musically inclined. Like I said, my family is very heavily involved in the arts, especially for my mom. So, like, she's she's trying to keep me out of the streets by putting me into, like, you know, <clears throat> all these artistic schools or after-school programs, and she's trying really hard. So I'm like, all right, bet. So I'm learning guitar, piano, all these other things. And, like, by the time I'm 16, I'm proficient in a lot of instruments to where I just start writing my own songs my brother leaves to new york and i'm i'm writing my own songs i'm just kind of like all right let's be honest like i'm trying to impress females like i'm trying to impress the girl. So, <laughs> so no, that's a fact. That's a fact. Let's, let's let's be 1000 right so i'm trying to impress the shorty so i'm writing all these songs about girls that i like and girls that broke my heart and girls that i, I broke their heart and regretted and all this stuff at 16 all my teenage woes yeah. um and my brother comes back into town. And he's kind of just kind of like, "Yo, you're you're pretty good." He hears these songs. He's like, "Yo, you're you're pretty nice." And me and my brother have a relationship where if I wasn't good, he would tell me, and he would be be very comfortable telling me. Yeah. Um. He'd be like, "Oh no, nah, bro, this is this is cheeks, bro. This is booty butt cheeks, bro. I don't like this." <laughs> um. But he was like, "No, nah, you you're actually pretty good, bro. You should actually think about recording this." So at that point in time, I think I'm about like eighteen, nineteen. I'm really not thinking about music at the time. I'm really heavily more into my acting, you know, so okay. um, that was seeing, I was seeing more success than that at the time. So for music, it was kind of like I was writing stuff, but I wasn't feeling comfortable, like putting anything out or even recording stuff in front of people. Mm-hmm. Um, but around 18, my brother would be like, yo, bro, come in the studio, record this hook for me. Come in the studio, record this hook for me. Come in, record this demo. Okay, record this, record that. And I would do it because of my bro and, you know, 
He's he's the bro. Uh, and people would be in the studio and like, yo, you can sing, yo, you got like you got actually got you got a, <laughs> you got a pin on you, bro. Like you know that's kind of nice one. He's like, what's that's pretty good. I and mean, you know your brother said write a hook. I didn't know he was gonna write that. And you know he would show them older stuff we recorded. And he's like, I, you know they'd be like, how old are you? You wrote that? I'm like 17, 16, you know. So at that point, I would get more success with people talking about yo come through and record come through and, and lace his hook come through and like come come talk to me yo come come get on this you know mm-hmm. song and that helped me get more comfortable doing stuff recording my own stuff you know and then it got to the point where I just felt comfortable recording and for me it just it became something that I just love to do regardless of the outcome so it was like, you know, kind of something that I put together and in part of my day to day is like, OK, wake up, do whatever you got to do, but write a song, you know, record a song, you know, make a song, you know, make music, you know, regardless of the outcome, whether whether you put it out or not, whether somebody buys it or not, whether, you know, it's yeah. it's it hits mainstream, makes you famous or whether nobody hears it, but your family members and nobody likes it. Make music. So right. that right. became part of my like day to day routine, and it just you know it works for me. So I, I love it, and it okay. definitely is a is a so beautiful it just album. Organically, basically, just exactly like naturally, actually. Mm-hmm. Okay. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any like projects out or like music out? Like, so I put a project out a long time ago. It was called Smoke and Mirrors. Um, that was kind of like for me. I, it was just a project for me to actually put stuff out because i don't like sharing stuff i'm not a very public person i'm not mm-hmm. like you see if i like i told you like interviews like all this sharing and talking and, <laughs> and expressing myself like yeah bro yeah. how i grew up that was not like the the wave bro so like, it don't seem this... like it though it don't seem like it though it seems bro, like, if, like ahead, if, you're, if, if the right person comes with you with like the right energy i feel like you would open up but i, I always yeah, I'm try like, I'm to be open too. I mm-hmm. always try to be open. I always try not to like close myself off to people now that I'm getting older, especially because it's just like you never know what people can teach you. You never know what you can learn from people. You never know what experiences are going to come out of whatever's happening. Yeah. So I try to at least stay open until somebody like, you know, shows me, that, okay, let me shut you off real quick. But yeah. uh, which I will admit is kind of like a hair pull trigger, but it's still like <laughs> I try to express myself a little bit. Uh, and, and stay open to people. So for me, especially music wise, I definitely mm-hmm. try to try to open myself up and collaborate with people and be, you know, cool with learning people and and, and figuring stuff out. Even mm-hmm. if I don't particularly necessarily do that. I remember when I first started doing music, everybody was trying to get me to do like 90s hooks and like revamped 90s hooks. And I was trying to tell them, like, oh, okay. I, I can't do that. Like, I am, you know, a child of the 90s, but at the same time, like, I don't have that 90s voice. Like, I don't have that. I don't have that. Like, (laughs) that's not my tone. So it's not going to sound how you think it's going to sound. And everybody was trying to get me to do that. But I was still trying to be open to it, at least. So Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's just, it's, it, I love creating. So Mm -hmm. even if it takes me outside of my comfort zone, working with other people that are not normally my speed or my tone or my sound. I, I normally hop on any type of beat, no matter what type of beat it is, because it's just kind of like one of those things I, I want to stretch myself. Yeah, so yeah. for me, it is kind of like that, you know, going out and reaching, touching other people, seeing what what comes out of it, first and foremost. Okay, mm-hmm. okay, for sure, for sure. Okay, okay, yeah. I, learned, I learned a little something there. Okay, okay. A little something, a little something, bro. A little, a little <laughs> something, something, you know what I'm saying? Um, okay. So I guess before we get into like the whole acting, because I want to cover every everything that you said, Absolutely. like you said, music, acting, mm-hmm. a whole bunch of other shit. So mm-hmm. um, before I get into that, what you're from California, right? Oh yeah, bro, California okay. native. What bro. school did you go to, and like how like how would you say your experience was like growing up in Cali? Because because I'm originally from Anaheim, I went to uh, Savannah High School. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know um, a couple of people that went to Savannah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, who you know? I know, no, I just met uh the homie uh Sticky right now that just I just met him the uh the other day. And then of course I know uh Lum didn't go to Savannah, but Lum I know was heavily like rooted in Savannah though. So oh, okay, that's my okay. bro bro. But um I am originally 
from California, born and raised, native, bro. I went to a bunch of different schools because I was a problematic child. Like yeah. I said, my mother tried to keep me, you know, contained with all these after school programs. I'm not going to say she failed, but I definitely fought her <laughs> along the okay. way. And, I, you know, I regret it now as an adult. But as a kid, you know, yeah. I'm a kid. I do what kids do. Right. Um, I went to a bunch of schools. I went to, I think, Valley Christian because they were trying to keep me in, like, the good schools, I guess. Oh, okay. So right. I went to Valley Christian, like, through middle school. Or not through middle school. Like, for one year in middle school. I was homeschooled before that because they wanted to keep me in the house. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then especially if I was doing anything artistic, you know, it would be easier if I was homeschooled. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I think after Valley Christian, oh, I went to Orange Lutheran. That was okay. in in Orange County even though I lived out here. Um, I caught the bus for two hours to go to Orange Lutheran. I liked Orange Lutheran. Orange Lutheran was a cool school. I'm not going to knock that. It was just, what as was a cool kid, about it? for me, the people, the atmosphere, I was well accepted at Orange Lutheran. Oh. You know, like going to Valley Christian, like as a black kid, like it was weird because yeah. it's majority white kids, right? Yeah. So you go and you click up with the black kids because you're black. Even if y'all like, like are like compatible or not y'all just link up because you're black right yeah so you'll right. be like kicking it with people you really don't rock with like that but it's just because y'all black and y'all the minority y'all y'all kick it with each other and it was weird you know because the majority is white and you don't know who really like fucks with you or not mm-hmm. um but orange lutheran yes it was majority white but that was more of like accepting they really rock with you they don't ask the awkward questions they're cool you yeah. know they they had everything like locked down as far as like personality. So that was a cool school, very creative, very, very high on um, academics and beyond. So like they were very, very like, they made sure like when it came to learning, you got what you needed to get. And then beyond, like what else do you want to do besides whatever you're studying? You know, you want to play okay. sports, we gonna, we gonna put you with the football team, great football team. You want to do drama, we'll link you with the theater program, great theater program. You want to do something else like you know um entrepreneur or you want to do philanthropy we'll link you up with our philanthropy you know team okay you know so it was a great school for just kind of like pushing you to the beyond but again i was a problem child uh, <laughs> <laughs> so i ended up going back i think to valley christian for a year got kicked out of there um and then i why, why were you getting kicked out was it because of fights and shit like that people trying to like try you Yes and no. Like, it wasn't like that. Like, I wasn't a problem child, like, all the way like that. Like, I wasn't, like, just at school fighting randomly. But uh, the reason why I got kicked out was on some, like, more, you know, violent. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I ain't gonna front, bro. It's you. I'm gonna be real with you. I got kicked out of that school because I brought a knife to school and got caught with it. Uh, That's but- it? But the reason why is because they was trying to jump the homie, and I was big on like, yo, if y'all jump the homie, I don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm, oh. about, to, I'm about to poke somebody. So, uh, so that kind of got out, and that's the reason why. And you know, they were like, oh, you can't bring weapons on campus. It's a private school. So, I mean, I'm not gonna knock like I didn't deserve to get kicked out. I deserve to get kicked out. I mean, that's light. I mean, I guess mad like, light, that. mad light. But I mean, it could have been a lot worse. It could have been mad light. Worse, but I did, I yeah. did get, I did get kicked out. That was my own fault. You know, I broke the eleventh commandment: Thou shalt not get caught. You know. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, it was just one of those things where it was, it was, I got kicked out of there and I graduated from Artesia. I wanted to go to Poly so bad. My mom was like, not having it. She was like, nah, no, no way. You're just going to be over there with all your little hoodlum friends. You just got kicked out of school. It's not going to work. Then my dad teaches at Compton High. He's about to retire, but he teaches at Compton High. And I was like, all right, let me go to Compton High with my pops. I get a ride to school every day. I'm not tripping. You know, it is what it is. She was like, nah, I'd rather you go to Poly. I was like, ah. So, <laughs> you know, they tried a bunch of schools. I ended up graduating from Artesia, which was cool. I like okay. Artesia. I'm not going to knock it. Like, Artesia was a school where, like, people from everywhere went. So, like, we had people from, like, yeah. Carson, Compton, Lakewood, the Valley. We had people from, like, everywhere at Artesia. So, it was like, mm-hmm. we got a mixed culture of California culture. And it yeah. was cool. So it was, it was a nice little school to do my last year, my last one, like a year and a half. But it definitely impacted, like, how things went. I was in school during 
the jerk culture when jerking was popular. Oh, uh, shit. I remember that shit, man. Exactly. Yeah. So that's when I was in high school, bro. So, okay. So that was like, wow. I was kind of starting my musical journey. So my brother was making beats and he was, you know, writing songs. And I was asking him, yo, can you make some jerking beats for the homies? And I was trying to sell beats to the homies, trying to do like my AR thing. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, and, and this is in high school. So it's like, you know, I'm trying to like, you already thinking ahead, type thing. You know, yeah. thinking ahead, look, you like, oh, let me give it to the homies because they blow up. We go blow up with the beats. Da, 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 da. My bro wasn't doing jerk beats, but he was making like some adequate jerk, like some actually some nice jerk beats at the time. Again, coach, shut up. Because um, <laughs> he's going to be loving that, bro. Shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he was making some very, very nice jerk beats. But it was like, that was kind of like my, my thought process of like, music is definitely a way I can see myself expressing myself and or making money, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, seeing it as, as one of my life purposes, you know, and, and, and expressing myself. Cause it's kind of like I'm in high school, I'm selling beats, I'm writing songs, even though I'm not recording them, but I, I feel myself being dragged towards music and, and, and writing in the arts, you know, in a type of way. So that was one half of it. And I, I really enjoyed growing up the way I did, even though I definitely made a bunch of mistakes, even though I definitely did a bunch of dumb shit. I, I definitely enjoyed growing up the way I did because it made me very unique in the way that I create. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, I understand that. Now, what, like, what, so you say you act, you do acting, right? Like, what got you into, like, acting? Was it, like, you took an acting class in school and you just said, you know what, I'm going to try this type shit? Nah, my, my again, family. So Man, my mom, okay. again, I'm the youngest of three. Uh, mm -hmm. Technically, four. My my little brother passed away, uh, but I have the younger. I'm the youngest of three, but my older brother and sister are five, four, five, six years older than me, right? Mm -hmm. So when they were born, my mother was putting them through the whole circuit, acting, singing, dancing, trying to you know do stuff like that. Um, so by the time I came through, they already knew the routine. So, yeah. so it was kind of like from the jump alright bro you know go ahead this is what we're going to do put you here take pictures oh, alright come over here smile okay come over here you know say this da, da, da. and they already knew how to how to run it because I, I was a couple years later yeah. uh, so it's definitely my mom was she says now when I talk to her about it she says acting was never like a real outlet or expression that she saw us following through she said it was just a way for us to kind of make money for for college and you know for our future but yeah. i don't see it like that i was like no nah, i feel like she really thought there was something special there yeah yeah <laughs> she, she put us through the ring um because you know my family is talented you know bias aside mm -hmm. but it was one of those things my mom was like okay put you through the auditions and from then she really did it the way that it was supposed to be done especially at the time you know, put me through classes, you know, put me through the headshots, got me the agents, you know, and at a certain point she became my agent and I was like, okay, cool. Um, and she was just very heavily involved in like me getting certain roles, me doing all this st stuff from a very, very young age to the point where I tell people all the time, like, nah, I teach acting. And I tell people, you know, they're like, oh, so tell me about your background. I'm like, no, I've, I've been acting successfully for 30 years and I'm 31 years old. So, mm. you know, uh, it, it is it is what it is. Do the math. Like, I'm not trying to boast or brag or anything. It's like, I'm not talking about, oh, I've been auditioning or I've been, you know, yeah. <laughs> doing, doing school plays. Like, no, I've been doing commercials. I've been doing print work. I've been in magazines. I've been... Shit, what commercials you been in? Bro, a bunch. <laughs> too many to name. At a certain point, when you do too many commercials on your resume, they just say list of... It's, uh, list is available upon request and i don't know if that list really exists i know it's just, it's a <laughs> i just know it's a long list like captain crunch nike pepsi you know anything For real? you know okay. all, the, all the big stuff bro all like the heavy hitters man um i remember we did the pepsi me and my bro did a pepsi commercial uh my pro my bro was in the adidas commercial with kobe rest in peace uh mm -hmm. back in the day when they won their little three-peat he was mm -hmm. he was with, he was on the Adidas commercial with Kobe back then. Um, I did commercials with Bubble Tape. I worked with Disney Channel, Nickelodeon. Um, I think I've done stuff for like ABC Family, TNT, 
Yeah, bro. I tell most people like any channel you you watch, I've probably been on. Whether it's a show or a commercial, I've probably been on it. Now, is it like a main type thing, or is it like a background? Oh no, no, no! My mom didn't play that. She said no background. <laughs> She's like, my baby a star. He not doing no background. <laughs> so no, my mom, my mom didn't play that. She didn't do the extra stuff. She did, she did main characters, principles only. So if I ain't say nothing, she wasn't with it. That's you know, or, or if my yeah, face bro. wasn't in it, she was like, "Nah, he's he cool. I'm straight." <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's dope, bro. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, what, bro. What What was like your favorite commercial that you done? Just like that you can remember. Favorite? Okay, that's hard. That's hard because I got a favorite for a couple of different reasons. Uh, I remember I did a bubble tape commercial. That one was lit because we was in Six Flags and they let us ride the ride. It was empty. Like, they shut down the shop for the day. Our shop, uh, the, the amusement park for the day. And they let us kind of, like, roll around all the rides and it was empty and all that stuff. Um, and then I, there was another one. Oh, oh, oh we got some action. Hold on. We might have a little scrap. No. <laughs> We can edit it out. It's cool. No, no, sorry, my bad, bro. I'm, I'm in the hood, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got action here, <laughs> uh, but not. Nah, um, I remember there was another commercial I did for Sears. I think it was for Sears. I can't remember, but I liked it because the um, one of the dudes that I was working with, uh, he taught me how to shoot craps that day. And I was like nine, ten years old. <laughs> <laughs> but he shot me he saw, he showed me how to shoot craps um as far as like movies i think that my favorite one that i did oh you was in movies oh, shit. movies bro TV, you really tried oh, gambino out here no nah, bro not even bro i just try to keep shit light bro <laughs> I, I try to be humble keep shit light because i know this all um, i appreciate the most high man he blessed me with everything I, i've done and, and, and still do right. um but I think movies wise, I think the damn that's hard. Uh, what's like the most recent one that you did? Movie, the most re oh, the movie wise, it's a while ago. I think the most recent movie I did was Jump In, that was a TV movie a while ago. You were in Disney. Jump In, yeah, bro. That was Disney Channel, ago. yeah, bro. What, wait, wait, wait what was your know. what was your character? What was your character, Lil Earl? I gotta go back and watch. All that. right, so you know Corbin, right? The main character. Yeah. You remember yeah. he had two friends, right? I got. He had, little, little, he had like two little homies in the boxing ring. Yeah. So there was the tall, dark skinned dude that was cool, like you know the more calm head one, and then there was the little one that was crazy and wild and like all out there. Oh, okay. I think. Damn, that was you, nigga. Yes, sir. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> Is it? Is it? Makes me my favorite show on Disney Channel. That, my yeah. favorite movie. I love Jump In as far as like the what happened in as far as like just the camaraderie on set. That one really felt like we was a bunch of kids on set, so we yeah. was having fun, you know. Um, I did another movie called The Ron Clark Story, and that one was fun because even though I was kids, or even though I was a kid, and we had a bunch of kids on set, the people that we were around treated me like I was an adult. And they talked to me like I was an adult. And it taught me a lot, like, as far as just how to act on set, how to be on set, and how to, like, move and all that. So uh, then did, a, did Like Mike 2. Like Mike 2 was fun because, like, I was 14 years old in Canada with my brother, and we was being reckless and wild. So <laughs> <laughs> that, I, that one was, like, one of my How was that, ones. like, meeting uh, Bow Wow and all them? Oh, no, that was, that, he was in the first one. I was in the second was the one. Uh huh. He was in the first one. I was in the second. Are you like the the lead character, or are you like one of the three? One of the three leads. So there was Joshua Washington, who was the star of the movie, uh, and then there was my homie Brett, who was another one of the co-stars, and it was me who played the third. Like out of the three friends, like the star and the two friends. Okay. So it was me playing one of the friends. Uh, I met Kel Mitchell on that set. He was really really fun. Oh, me and him. Cool. Yeah, me and him ended up working again together. Um, Later on, on the good good luck Charlie. Oh, okay. Yeah, he came back around. I think he guest starred on Good Luck Charlie when I uh, I was on there as well. So that was fun. Um, uh, and then, um, who else was on like Mike too? Uh, 
Michael Beach. Well, I don't think most people know. Michael Beach is a, uh, I don't know, people watch Sons of Anarchy. I mean, a lot of people, like older people know him, but uh, I don't feel like y'all, they all know him. He's on Sons of Anarchy. He was part of the Black Motorcycle Club. He's like a ball dude. He normally plays like the 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 strong dad, you know, role type of dude. Like Michael oh, Beach. Okay. Yeah, okay. Michael Beach taught me a lot about just kind of like subtlety in acting. He was a dope dude. He was cool. He was cool. But yeah, yeah. I see yeah. you, nigga. Okay. I'll be low, bro. <laughs> I don't like to do all like the talk and shit because I feel like people would think I'm bragging and then at the same time I'll be like, bro, I just no nah, man, cares, talk man. your shit, man. Let who these cares, niggas know. Bro, who be, who be really caring, my nigga. We, like I'm out here in Cali, bro. Everybody be doing this shit, bro. I'll be walking up to everybody go, I was in I was in, you know, season four of this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. I was in, you know, this episode of this. I'm like, all right, bet. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, who care about my little credit? I'll be telling you, oh, I was Man, in Snowfall. I don't know what part of Cali like, that is. I don't be seeing them niggas anywhere, bro. Bro, like, <laughs> talking, bro. And I'm like, all right, bro. I'm, people are like, oh, what are you doing, Richard? I'm like, oh, I was on Snowfall. And I'm like, oh, well, I was on, you know, I was on this, that, and the other. I'm like, all right, man, I don't feel like telling y'all no more. So, cool. like, I just be chilling, bro. I don't be saying nothing, bro, because people don't be caring. I don't be trying to press it on people. I'll just be about, like, the next thing, the next No, nah, that's dope, bro. That, that should be highlighted, bro. That, that's dope, like. <laughs> that's dope as hell especially like coming from re- where you came from and like going from school to school and just like the the gradual progression and like eventually you know accomplishing all that shit that's crazy bro not yeah, many people man. accomplish that shit for real so yeah man I I, I I like being me there's sometimes i like being me a lot just like as much as sometimes i wake up I'm like damn man this, this is a struggle but i like being me because i like what i did with what i got you know I appreciate, and I, I I know I still got way more in the tank too. So I feel, I feel good about you know what I what I can do. In my, when you in say my way skills. more in the tank, what do you mean exactly? What, what's in store for Fox Collins in the future? You know what I'm saying? Is that, is that your real name? No, oh no, 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 no. no. That's like a stage. Name. <laughs> oh yeah, us oh, nickname that like just kind of stuck with me, bro. I had my nickname for as long as I can remember, pretty much. Mm. You know, I just I always remember that my bro calling me Spot and then Spot Collins. And then it just kind of just grew into its own persona and its own thing. So it's just, okay. it sticks with me. So <laughs> I tell people all the time, sometimes I, I, I introduce myself as Spot Collins to most people, you know, over my real name. I only tell people most of the time when I, I feel inclined to tell people my real name when it is when a check is involved. So <laughs> yeah. No, I feel that. I feel that. You got you to gotta sign my real name on that. So. <laughs> <laughs> I you feel can't that. Point to spot that's not gonna come to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. but nah, it's just you know, as far as what's coming next, um, man, everybody wants you to put out music, <laughs> and I don't, yeah. I don't. You could do a lot of different shit. Apparently, I, mean. I know I don't want to, and I don't say that. I say that lightly, just because like I love making music. But that's my thing. I love making music because I know I can and I know I'm good at it to a certain extent. So for me, it's like I love making music, but everybody wants me to put stuff out. And I'm like, though, being famous just don't seem fun right now. Like, it doesn't seem fun anymore. Yeah. So it's like putting out music so that people can, like, try to be fans and being like so I can blow up and be on stage and go on tour. It doesn't seem as fun as it did like five, ten years ago, you know. So I'm not really interested in putting stuff out, you know. But people want me to put something out. People want me to put out an album or an EP or a project or whatever. So I might. I might. Why, why do you think it's? I kind of I feel what you're saying, but to the average person, like. You saying that kind of sounds crazy. Like, that sounds like a crazy thought. Like, why wouldn't you want to be famous? Like, why wouldn't you want to be this lit rapper? You know what I'm saying? Like, why, why, in your opinion, do you think it's kind of tough being famous, like, in this climate, especially? Okay, so, for me, it's just, like, now with cancel culture and everybody wanting to, to be a label or be right or be on the side of justice, I feel like it's hard to just kind of express yourself or be yourself freely without Mm -hmm. worrying about public opinion, you know? Yeah. Um, Yeah. I have a very dark sense of humor. Me too. 
so it's like for me like i i would love to try to like pursue stand-up comedy just because it's like that's, that's on my bucket list to like just i mean stand-up. if you're doing all this shit man i don't see why not <laughs> shit this nigga yeah. on jump in and shit I'm like yeah <laughs> it was just, it's just one of those things that like I, I would love to to pursue that and just just try it not even like as a serious thing but just like as a bucket list Item just like go up on hey, stage. Yeah, I can month. do it. You could do it, bro. For a month, bro, just like run up and do like a couple little places, right? But it's like my sense of humor is so dark that I'm like afraid to like, yeah, really not. I wouldn't say afraid, but I just know it wouldn't be advantageous for me to go up and tell my type of jokes in today's type of climate. And it's just, it's, it's. I would rather wait it out. I feel like honestly, all right, I'm gonna say this with you because I, I, I keep this to myself. Normally, but this is my prediction for the next couple of years. Um, I feel like in the next 10 years, five years, give or take, five, 15 years, right? Five, 10, 15 years, it'll be inappropriate to cancel people, right? As much as it's problematic, as like things that people get canceled for is problematic, right? it will be problematic to try to cancel somebody, you know, because it's, you don't think about what that does to the, not just them, but their whole family, their livelihood, their, their household, yeah. if they got kids, you know, nobody wants to be bullied for being so-and-so's daughter because they did this, blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. You know, I had nothing to do with that, but you know, I, I feel like it's just, Sadly, I don't like saying that, but I, it's, it's a couple of traumatic events away from being problematic to cancel people in the way that we do it right now. Uh, so I'd rather just wait it out. If if fame is what we're waiting for and, and reaching for, I'd rather wait it out until this whole cancel. What do you think? What do you think will will like spark that change though? It, it doesn't li- really seem like it right now, but that's what I'm saying. Right now, it's big on council culture. Everybody is problematic. Something's gonna offend everybody, and that's how yeah. I tell people to create. Like, yo, whatever you create is gonna offend somebody. So just write what you want, sing what you want, do what you want, because it's gonna offend somebody. Who cares? Yeah. But at the same time, it's like for me, it's like like I said, it's sad to say. I feel like it's a couple of traumatic events like it's hard I don't, I don't like to speak stuff into existence but like let's say yeah somebody commits suicide because there's somebody else's son and they get bullied for it or somebody else's daughter and they get bullied for it you know or somebody getting canceled to the point where it's, they have a mass shooting or something like that mm-hmm. or like lash out because now their whole livelihood has been changed and they can't handle that off of a mistake that they made when they were 15 or off of something that they said in a, a split drunken moment, which everybody has, everybody does. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like something like that will happen to the point where they will tie it back to cancel culture. And they're gonna be like, yeah, this is, this is not healthy as far as just a, cause we hold people on such a high pedestal just because of their skill level. That's we the hold problem. Them yeah. We hold their morality on the same level that we hold their skill. Just because you're really great at basketball doesn't mean that you're a really great person. Just because you sing very well doesn't mean that, you know, you make the best choices when it That's comes to the biggest to it. point. Yep. So we <laughs> hold people on these same levels that it's not necessarily fair because we don't do the same thing with our friends. We, mm-hmm. Bro, me and you both know people that are, you know, as far as dudes go fuck niggas, like let's be real. We know we know shorties that you know have questionable actions. We know people that are out here scamming, you know, stealing. We all know people like that. We don't hold them to the same, you know, accountability level as we do celebrities. But just because they sing yeah. very well, act very well, you know, so it's just not as it doesn't seem as fun to me right now. To That's why I that. say never meet your idols, bro. Cause you yeah, because you never know like what they really going through and they got real issues and you holding them to a certain level and it's like. It's not fair, bro. Like, it's not fair that we we put too much on them, you know, mm-hmm. and we don't let them just kind of like make mistakes, have you know their issues. We as soon as they make one mistake, that's their whole career, bro. Whole career. That's yeah. It's not fair, bro. I could I could see actually. It's kind of like where you're canceling cancel culture in a sense. So I could I could see that eventually having like a, a ripple effect. Yeah, it's not soon, bro. It's not soon, but it's like five, ten years down the line. Yeah. Where yeah. it's like, you know, 
something dramatic is going to happen and everybody's going to be like, you know what? We need to stop cancel culture. It's not healthy, you know, because it affects other mm-hmm. people other than who are canceling. Like, I get corporations, like, you know, even then, you know, those people do have families you got to think about, but I'm pretty sure they'll bounce back to other corporations or they'll just change the name and make it to something else. But when you, like, get to specifically people, it's like, you know, minus, you know, super heinous things, like, say, you, like, killed and ate 17 people. All right, bro, you don't really have to, like, <laughs> do too much. Like, bro deserves to be in jail. But, like, you know, dude says something that was problematic when he was 14. Now dude's 45. I'm not yeah. about to hold you accountable to that. You was 15, bro. You was, I said some dumb shit when I was 15, bro. Who so, you telling? Bro, <laughs> so, like, this, this whole council culture is weird, and I feel like... <laughs> And it comes, and it comes from the the younger generations. I love them because they teach me so much. But at the same time, they they haven't had the chance to understand that their mistakes are mistakes yet. So mm-hmm. they're holding everybody else to this high standard that they don't meet, you know. But it's like, oh, you shouldn't be getting these unrealistic standards. You should be doing this. You should be doing that. You should be doing this. You should be doing that. I'm like, look, look you don't understand. You grew up in a cold. I understand. There's some stuff that I did when I was younger that was problematic. Now and I don't do those things anymore. Yeah, but for you to still hold me to the level where like you feel like I still do that stuff because you're only 15 years old and you haven't had time to be problematic yet, mm-hmm. <laughs> or at least realize that you are problematic yet. Yeah. I mean, you know, you need to at least like what I feel like our younger generation is missing is forgiveness. They haven't learned that yet, and our generation or the generation slightly below me and above me, we learn that because we have to forgive our parents. And like our older generation for stuff that they did to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we had to learn how to forgive. So I feel like we know how to do that, but just not verbally. Yeah. But at the same time, our younger generation just doesn't know how to do it at all. You know, as far as like understanding and forgiveness, this is like, it's to the point where it just makes you not want to do anything unless you're 15 right now or 14 <laughs> right now. And you know, you have pretty much a spotless record. Like, I know I don't. So it's I like, know I don't either, bro. Exactly. So it's like, yo, like, y'all, like I, I'm cool. Like I, I understand. I take accountability for everything I've done. I'm not. I'm not tripping like that. But it's just like the level of y'all gonna go to try to make me feel bad again for something that I did when I was 12, 15, 17, 18, whatever. Blah blah blah. Like I was young and dumb. That's why they say that I'm young and dumb. That's why that mm-hmm. you know phrase you know comes out there. But they think celebrity equals perfection. You know, because you perform at a perfect level, they feel like you should be, you know, a perfect person. There ain't none of us Jesus, man. Come on now. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They don't even know what they had to go through just to get to that point. Nothing, now bro. They, now they got to be all perfect now because they're in the public eye and shit. Exactly. 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 Because I was watching the, the Cat Williams special that he just dropped. And he, it, people are saying that Cat Williams fell off or he's not funny because... He's trying to adapt to how the, the society is now where they just, you can say one controversial thing and that's your career. Like, it's cancel Cat Williams now. Bro, and it, and, it, and it's it's honestly true. And that's for me, it's like comedy is one of my favorite mediums to kind of escape with. I love mm-hmm. watching comedy specials. I love comedians. I just love watching comedy stuff. But it's like, I noticed that comedy is getting very light. And I love you know, kind of edgy, offensive comedy. That's mm-hmm. always, you know, the stuff that makes me kind of ashamed that I'm laughing at it or kind of like, oh, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's what I love, bro. Like, that to me is right. like the real comedy because I feel like that's what I, me and my friends do that all the time. We're going through traumatic stuff or we're going through the stuff that's kind of like a little bit, you know, on the sadder side. We mm-hmm. joke about it because it helps us cope. Like, it's, it's, right. You know, we Coping joke. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, we all love that kind of darker side of comedy, but it's just mm-hmm. kind of like nowadays, it's, it's... It seems all serious now. It's like, so, you have to, like, you have like to a social check your commentary, joke. Like, you have yeah. to do perfect jokes, and I, I rock with Dave Chappelle. Yeah. Heavy, and I'm supporting him, you know, because it's like, and I know, you know, a lot of people don't, don't aren't aren't gonna like it just because you know and i understand what they don't like i'm not gonna say you know they're wrong i understand their discomfort and disgruntledness with dave Chappelle, Mm -hmm. but for me i'm on his side for the strict reason of you know it's comedy we joke about everything 
right? Everything. Yeah. Dave Chappelle has made a joke about damn near everything, bro. And everybody was okay with everything else until recently. So for me, until certain things get brought until up. Until certain things get brought up, and yeah. then it's problematic, you mm-hmm. know. So for me, it's like, and for me, it's it's everything that I that he was saying beforehand was not problematic to that exact same group of people. Mm-hmm. But now it's problematic, and some of those group of people are are part of the group that he was talking about. So for instance, mm-hmm. you know, if he's saying jokes about nigga, nigga, this nigga, nigga, this nigga, that, and then, you know, he does a joke about the LGBTQ community, black people in that community aren't offended at the black part of the joke, but they're offended at the LGBTQ part of the joke. It doesn't and make I, any sense to me. Yeah. You know, I understand. So this is my thing. I understand now why they are upset. You know, mm-hmm. one of the things that I do when I pray for, I pray for wisdom. And for me, it's like trying to understand at least people that, that even if we don't agree, I can understand where you're coming from. So exactly. I understand the frustration. I understand the disgruntedness. I understand the the need for, to rally and all that stuff. I understand that. Like it's not like it's misplaced. Mm-hmm. There's stuff that if you are more, you know, a certain type of people, you are offended, and I get it. But at the same time, if you were a fan at Dave Chappelle at any point before this, and this is the only thing that's upsetting you there needs to be something else that needs to be talked about. Like, if you, yeah. were, if you were a fan of the Chappelle show beforehand, right, mm-hmm. and then now something is upsetting you, we need to talk, right? Because he's done way more problematic stuff before this, right? If now whatever he's saying is, is upsetting you, there's something like, that we... You know, something internally with you that, you, you know what I'm saying, you're finding offensive... It, yeah, you, you're being biased. I've heard, you know, white comics do jokes, black jokes, right? Mm-hmm. If if they're funny, I laugh. I laugh, yeah. Bro, if that's that's the point of the joke is to try to make you laugh. Like, bro, if they are funny, and I'll tell you that there's not too many of them, but I think there's been one. I can't remember what it is. There's been one comic that has used the N word. Was it Louis C.K.? No, I didn't like his. I know which one you're talking you about. You saw the thing he did with Chris Rock. No, I didn't see that. Which one? What did you do with Chris Rock? Is it problematic? I think it was like an HBO special. They were all sitting on like chairs and they were talking about like, oh, I can say the N word and you can't. Like he was talking to, I think it was Louis C.K. talking to Jerry Seinfeld. And he was like, yeah, we use the, the word, you know, N word all the time. You know what I'm saying? And he just said it. He just said it like loosely. Like it's like, it's like, that's just what they say. Like, bro, and, and, that's. He Jerry Seinfeld was kind of like, uh, nah, that's not that. I don't find any humor in that. He said no. it in like a kind of slick way to where it's not obvious, but he's like, uh, I didn't really find much humor in that. No, Jerry Seinfeld is like a low key asshole, but like in the movie, <laughs> like when you watch Jerry Seinfeld, like for real, like when you like really watch him, he's like an asshole, but like in the best way, like the, in the best way that you mm-hmm. want to be around, like because he's gonna point out some stuff, like he's gonna keep it real with you. I'm like, right. yeah, like look, I. I don't want to be touched or like, no, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's real. Like, I really don't want to rock with you. But no, okay. Louis C.K. had some jokes where it was like, there was one that he had that made sense, right? Mm-hmm. But it just wasn't funny to me, right? Mm-hmm. I think was, he had a joke where, and I, I, it's not my joke, so I'm probably going to butcher it, and I don't want to act like this was the exact joke and I'm doing it justice. But he had a joke where he was like, I hate when people say the N-word because when you say the N-word, in my head, I don't think the N word. I think nigga. So now you're putting your thoughts on me because you said the N word. So mm-hmm. for me, I was thinking about it, and when I heard it, and I was like, "That is absolutely true." I was like, I mean, now, yeah. logically, <laughs> logically, that makes sense." Yeah. But I'm not laughing. Like you paused for laughter there, and I'm not. It's yeah. not that funny. Right? Yeah. So for me, I'm like, you know, you have jokes that make sense, but it's not funny, so I don't laugh. But then there was another joke, again, I can't remember it, but he, this dude had a joke, and it had the N-word in there, and it was funny as fuck, bro. And, <laughs> I, and I was laughing for, like, four days, bro. You and I, who I No, I don't even remember. all I, Like, because I was a kid when I heard it, bro. I was a young kid, okay. and I wasn't supposed to be watching it. So that's why I like the like Comedy like, Central like, late bro, night. Bro, yeah, at late night. I'm not really supposed <laughs> to be up, you know, watching with the volume down. But I'm yeah. Like, I'm <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So 
it's like one of those and I, I I I don't remember. I just know he had he had like an hour and a half special bro and he had me like almost getting in trouble like trying to <laughs> do the night because he had a couple of jokes and I remember one he said one that had the n-word and it was dying. He had another one talking about bro I'm so skinny if I was a transformer I'd transform into a toothpick. I died laughing at that. <laughs> I died laughing at that. And he, he he had another. He had a bunch of dirty jokes. He had one talking about. Um, he asked his wife to do anal, and she said, "All right, but I gotta do you first. And he said, "At the end of the night, he sat there crying. She was like, "Why are you crying? You know, this is what you wanted." He said, "I thought you would take it out the box first. And like, I was, <laughs> bro. So like, all of his jokes were at that level, bro. Like all of them were like that. And I'm a kid watching this." So growing up, this is the comedy I'm watching, bro. Like, this, yeah. is, this Death Comedy Jam, bro, Kings of Comedy, all, this is what King I'm doing. Yeah, bro. that was a time, bro. Rest in so, peace, Bernie Mac, man. Rest in peace, Bernie Mac, big dog, bro. So this man. is what I'm growing up with, but it's like now comparing to what is socially acceptable now. It's crazy. Bro, I was watching day. bro, I was watching Def Comedy Jam the other day just because he was putting it on as something to watch. And I was dying laughing to myself because I was like, if this were to come out right now, all of you guys would be canceled. Canceled. Every, every person that steps on this stage would be <laughs> canceled, bro. Especially, especially Martin Lawrence. Expect the host. Oh man. <laughs> Martin, bro, the stuff that Martin said and did on that stage, bro, would have had him sued 15 times a night, bro. <laughs> and dead. I was laughing. I was like, this would not fly today. This would not fly today. And I think to myself, like, I want to do comedy, but at the same time, I don't want to do comedy now because it's like, I can't really say what I want to say. And I'm not about to censor myself. Like, I'm, I'm going to yeah. say what the fuck I want to say. So I think the closest person that kind of gives us like that, that old school feel is Andrew Schultz. I think yes. Andrew Schultz is like the closest thing to that. I just got into Andrew. I just got into Andrew Schultz. But it's, I see it's it's still like a touch of like, like there's a line. I feel like there's a line that, 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 that he won't cross. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he's good but, at doing that, though. But, he, but he yeah. kinda, he's good at you know stretching no. out the, the uh, not going past the 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 threshold of like oh, oh this is offensive to everyone in here like exactly. But and he keeps it fair. He makes fun of everybody too. It's not like see, that's like, my thing. Growing up with Eddie Eddie uh, Eddie Murphy, seeing Raw and Delirious at a young age, bro. <laughs> Like, I have no threshold. Like, I have no line. Like, he was saying whatever he wanted, bro. And it was hilarious. And the audience was laughing. Everybody was laughing. Um, another dude I liked was Jimmy Carr. Jimmy Carr, I don't know if you remember. Mm-hmm. He's a, a British dude. He normally says whatever he wants, right? Normally. Yeah. Normally, he says whatever he wants. Yeah. I just recently watched a special of his. And then I watched something else that he was, he was a part of. And I noticed that it was a little bit lighter than usual like coming from a guy that had a joke that said would you fuck your dad to save your mom right and he actually do it in the audience like would you fuck your dad to save your mom right and like that that was a joke in his in his bit to be in something that's a little bit more lighter you mm-hmm. know something like like people dying from covid i'm like all right you know, it's not, <laughs> you know that's 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 edgy but yeah. it's like you know, because oh, people really died from COVID, but I feel like from yeah. what you're used to, bro, like that's that's low key light, you know. That's very light. Who you who's know? your um who's your top five like comedians of all time? Top five, because I think my list is gonna be a lot different than a lot of people. Okay, okay, so number one, Dave Chappelle. Mm-hmm. Uh, nah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. My number I'm one sorry. is different, actually. I'm but sorry. Dave Chappelle I, is, is up there. Though. I'm sorry. Dave Chappelle is number two. I'm sorry I even said that. <laughs> number, number one is Eddie Murphy. Okay, okay. I want I want Eddie Murphy to drop a special right now. Well, I don't because he's gonna get canceled. But if it's he gonna could, get canceled. Yeah. if he if he could say what he wanted, I want him to drop a special right now. Yeah. Uh, Eddie Murphy. Two is Dave Chappelle. Uh. Three, okay, this is going, this is going, this is going ruffle some feathers. Um, three is Zach Galifianakis. Mm, 
Okay, from, that's different. From um, uh, Hangover. You stand up, bro. Bro, he is hell. Bro, after this, after this, please, please, I'll text you to make sure you do it. Please go watch some Zach. He has a special. I forgot what it is. I know it's on Netflix though. Watch Zach Galifianakis. He has a special where he plays his own twin too in the special. He's hilarious, bro. Zach mm. Galifianakis is one of my like sleepers, bro. He's hilarious. Okay. Uh, and then it goes Cat Williams. Um, yep. Because everybody thinks that's my dad, Loki. <laughs> I can see but, that. I can see that. No, 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 bro. If you Google my name, <laughs> if you Google my name, it says Cat Williams is my dad. Uh, oh, for real? Yeah, for real. Uh, Cat Williams, plus he's funny. Uh, he's very hilarious. Cat Williams, number four. And then number five is Jimmy Carr. But like Jimmy old Carr. Jimmy Carr. But nah, Jimmy Carr, period. But Jimmy Carr is hilarious because he just, if you're going you to cross the line, cross it. Like, you know, especially yeah. in his older stuff. If you're going to say some, some offensive shit, say some offensive shit, bro, and do it the whole show. Like, yeah, the whole back, the same bro. energy. You don't got to switch yeah. up because when you exactly. do, like, that that's what starts to offend people because they see that your content's starting to change and now they're feeling like oh uh they're kind of pandering almost exactly so you know i'm like saying? look don't don't do comedy for other people you have an audience bro you know we was i was watching jimmy Carr when he was problematic i'm gonna still watch jimmy Carr now if you were still problematic bro i'm not gonna stop watching you because you say some problematic stuff, okay? It doesn't mean that I'm gonna go out and do some problematic stuff. Like he doesn't say anything that's like, you know, call to action and do something violent. It's just some stuff that's gonna be like, okay, keep people don't want joked about. Okay, everybody don't want some stuff joked about. Some people don't like my mom. My mom hates all jokes about elderly people. Doesn't matter what joke it is. <laughs> if you make a joke about old people, she doesn't find it funny and she'll get like super offended. What she'll tell you to like stop. For real? Oh, for real, bro. She don't like people joking about old people. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. It's like... They make fun of young people. It's okay, though. And yeah, yeah I can joke about my cousin <laughs> all day. I can joke about my cousin. I can call people you know, a little peanut head baby. And she <laughs> don't care. She don't care. As soon as I make a joke about an old person, that's offensive. That don't, You're disrespecting your elders. Don't do that. And so it's like, yo, so it's everybody's going to be offended at something. Like, so... If you don't cross that line, cross that line and don't apologize for it. But mm -hmm. that I feel like that works kind of for comedy if you're willing to take that stance. And every other media that doesn't work, you That's know, right. yeah. it doesn't work as a singer. You can't be like, oh, I had this problematic idea when I was younger. Now I have a different view. They're still going to hold you accountable to what you said back then. And you can't kind of hide behind it was a joke or it was, you know, as part of my act or da, da, da. you can't kind of like, you know, have that buffer between there to where, mm -hmm. you know, they'll understand that they'll just be like, nah, canceled, you know, and, and pe they don't understand that opinions change either. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I remember back in the day, I used to be very, very heavily with the death penalty. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, it is what it is. You you kill somebody, you know, mark them, get them out of here. An eye for an eye, yeah. An eye for an eye, get them out of here, right? You know, mm -hmm. that's how it is. If somebody, if it happened to me and somebody killed somebody that I knew, I'd either want to do it myself or you better get them before I do, you know, so it made sense to me. I grew up, a couple years later, I saw a couple documentaries, talked to a couple people that actually had a very heavy hand in, in that topic. And completely changing my view to now i'm like nah bro it don't really make sense like you know i get it you know why you feel like it's necessary but it just don't make sense like we don't rape rapists right so it's like yeah why why are we killing killers like okay they gotta be locked up you know how much it sucks to be have you ever been in your room for like 18 years and you just couldn't leave you know how much that sucks bro <laughs> that so, and that plays a, a big mental toll on you too, bro. So that's what I'm saying. Like that's just as bad as just marking them and getting them out of here. I, so I think it's kind of unfair to feel, to play play God in that way now. So, yeah. to, so the fact that I can change my mentality of thinking with that, but I can't change my mentality of thinking with other things, and people hold you so accountable for like your past thoughts. Mm -hmm. it, it's tough to want to like express yourself in a way that can make you viral or make you famous or make you, you know, 
you know, noticeable because they're going to go digging. They're going to go looking through your life, you know? Yeah. And I got, I wouldn't say skeletons, but I just got stuff that I don't feel like being brought up and, and accused of again, or, you know, or, you know, talked about again, because like, look, I'm not the type of person that I'm going to go back and like, I'm sorry for what I did back. I'm like, look, I already paid, I already paid for that. Or I, <laughs> I already apologized to the person I need to apologize for. The fact that y'all getting offended to me don't matter to me. And I don't care. And people yeah. aren't going to like that. So it's just kind of like, it makes me hesitant to, to pursue mm-hmm. any type of fame. But like, at the same time, I'm, I'm an artist, so I'm going to create. So if anything comes from that, so be it, you know, I'll, I'll ride that wagon. But mm-hmm. Like I seen um I seen this video, I posted it on my story. Uh I saw this video of Justin Bieber. He had like this disease where like side of his face was numb. Uh-huh. Like the other side was working. A big prayers for Justin Bieber, man. Mm. And I was like, I was looking in the comments section and they were just bringing up that time that he said uh one less lonely and we're Yeah, bro. And they're like, Oh, that's his karmic debt for what he said. No, bro. Like a long time no. ago. It's like he apologized for that shit mad he times. Apo- mad times, bro. <laughs> he felt so bad. That nigga was crying. I think there was like a video where he was crying about the shit. Bro, and, and and the thing is, I really think he really meant that too because you gotta really think about just like just be hanging around a lot of niggas, bro. Like for real. I sure so, Simon. I mean So he be hanging around a lot of black dudes, man. So you 14, you saying stuff you don't like, I was making mad problematic. So how many of us have seen like, you know, uh, what is that? Jingle Bell, Batman Smells, Robin Lady, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, those yeah. types of songs, bro. I I know to this day I'll be singing, I'll be remixing my own songs into like problematic songs, you know. And it's like, it is, it's what we do, bro. Like, who cares? But y'all hold. He got recorded, and he blew up, and then that came out. So now y'all holding him to account, like, and he apologized, and now stuff's going on with his face. You still holding him accountable to that? Like, like he already years ago, yeah. Well, he already apologized for that. I remember he lost a bunch of fans to that. Like he he atoned for that already, but now y'all still holding him accountable for stuff years ago, you know. And it's not like he's shown the same behavior. I haven't heard him say something since. And as for like one of the white boys that does kind of take from black culture, he does it in a way that is at least semi respectful. Like yeah. he pays his homage. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of one of those things to where. It's just, to me, if y'all over here blaming him for some stuff he doesn't, like, really, really deserve to be blamed for, you know? Yeah. So, it's one of those things that, you know, the same thing happens to Chris Brown. Everything, every time somebody brings up something, mm-hmm. same thing happens to uh, Michael Vick every time something happens. <laughs> like Every That's time, still, bro. people still. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. Still, bro, and Michael and Michael Vick served jail time. That's not what I'm saying. Service, <laughs> right? not like, paying a fine, not not yeah. some like he didn't get no slap on the wrist. Like Michael Vick served jail time, bro. He did a bit. <laughs> did a bit. He got a record, bro. That's so, crazy. And y'all bro. still bring it up. Still, still. Every time, it don't matter what happened, even. Michael Vick, dog abuser and kennel fight haver, <laughs> cured cancer. Like y'all will always bring that up, and it's cold, bro. Like this cold, this world ain't got no sense of forgiveness, and it's sad, man. It's really sad. That's fucked up, bro. But hey, mm-hmm. man, you know what I'm saying. Let the people know where to find you. You know, what hey, I'm saying? everywhere. Your um, IG. You know, what I'm saying I, your latest movie, your latest yeah. commercial. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Is there uh uh IG Spot Collins, I think Twitter's what is Spot Collins. I don't really use it, but hop on there too. Uh, I think if do I have a TikTok? I do have a TikTok. I think that's Spot Collins or it's Spot Collins. Um, working on some new stuff. Tenders out of the making. Working on this new project. Can't talk about it, but it's really gonna be lit coming up this uh this summer. Mm-hmm. Um, and working on some music. I might put some out. Homie Tavi said I need to put out music. Mill said I need to put out some. Shout music. out to Tavi. I fuck with Tavi. Yeah, Lum said I need to put out some music, man. So I, I'm probably gonna put something out, man. I'll put something out. Yeah, I can okay. <laughs> Appreciate, Appreciate you, bro. having you on, man. Damn, always, man. Probably one of my always. favorite favorite interviews, bro. Honestly. Oh man, man. oh I appreciate that. <laughs> Talked about a whole bunch of shit, man. It's like, yes, damn, sir. This shit yes, was sir. Like a real conversation, but absolutely, that's what I like, man. It wasn't an interview; it was a conversation, man. Thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> no doubt.